we've seen those situations before as well, where the Leshrac is caught in that arena of blood. Once they have that Yules, they just pop their ultimate on, they make sure Diabolic Edict is running as well, they start spinning in that Yules, and then you're copying a bit too much damage as the Mars, especially, because you're not going to be mitigating that magic damage at all. So it's a great pick from VG so far. It gives them good push early on. That Diabolic Edict, of course, is pretty much um, very high uptime, which you could, you know, get a push going quite fast, just like forward can with her Jakiro. So you have that option now as well for Vici. Ties in their draft quite well. Forward going for that Ember Spirit is pretty good, I have to admit. Like, again, you don't have the best hard stuns right now from VG. Of course, once Yang probably grabs a Blink, it's going to be much easier. And once maybe even DY grabs a Blink as well for the Root, it's going to be an easier time. Before then, it should be fairly easy for CCNC to dip in and out. Just going to have to watch out for the Silence coming out from Fade. But he should be able to play around what Vici has early on. Like maybe the first 10 to 15, not going to have an issue. As time goes on and the items start coming out, he's going to have to play a bit safe. But it does give Ford a bit more momentum into that mid game. A hero like Ember doesn't take too much to come online and is very active around the map. Well, it should be a very interesting matchup from both these sides. Of course, Vici Gaming, one game ahead. They can win this game out. They will just go ahead 2-0 to zero for the start of the day. Forward gaming, though, definitely not wanting to allow that to happen too easily. They are going to try and force this to a game number three if they can. Of course, that's what we want as well, John, right? Like, we want as much Dota as possible while we have the chance. Nevertheless, though, we'll have to see what happens. And as per usual, this damn draft screen... <laughs> it will finally end. It just kind of, yeah, it just lingers. It just hangs awkwardly, yeah. Well, I die on the front page right now as the Crystal Maiden. I kind of wonder how much work he can get done with this hero. You'd assume... <laughs> you'd assume that with the Crystal Maiden, Forward Gaming would be looking again to be aggressive with this draft. Because uh, they do get online a lot earlier than the side of Vici would. You're always going to have that constant mana coming in, but we thought that last game as well, and that just wasn't the case. So I, I kind of wonder whether they will. Look, with a support duo, with a laning duo of Sven, Crystal Maiden, the kill ops are certainly possible. You have pretty high kill potential here. It would probably take until level 3 if you're CM, where you would really start to be comfy, but early on you can kind of dish out that damage. It's going to be much easier to sustain that Stormhammer use as well. I mean, you know, it's still going to be atrocious. You have 200 mana pool at level 1, 267, 110 per Stormhammer. Even with that ore, it's going to be wild, but hey, it speeds up your mana regen, please. You're not going to be waiting too long when you expend two stuns. Oh, fair points. You can see bot lane as well. They're chopping the trees out to force DY to get his stun off. Yeah, I'll snaking. Does cop a fair bit of damage though, and there are quite a few heroes here from VG Gaming, so they'll have to be wary of that. I doubt forward will really try. In fact, VG Gaming are the ones who are moving forward. Using those spark rates to their advantage. To not allow the side of forward to actually walk in range for that bounty. Thing is, forward gaming, they will get the top runes anyway, so it'll be a two for two trade. Forward, we're trying to snag an extra one to get the game started, but it won't work out their way. Nevertheless. Snaking MSS going to be down in that off lane. There is currently a bit of a tri lane being run by Vici Gaming though, and I think they probably will keep it that way until they at least find maybe one or two kills. And of course, you want to ensure that Paparazzi gets a good start, gets that early Midas up, so you can really start being efficient with all that net worth you'll be pulling in. Definitely so. Again, that timing on the Midas is going to be key for Arc Warden. We saw Paparazzi in the last game; he did a lot of work, but this time around. Forward is being a bit more aggressive. Yes, DY cops a hell of a lot of harassment, but Snaking will probably get the same. Does at least avoid that spark rate that was placed down. DY, we'll get a salve being placed on him by Fade. Some great support there from another support. Looks like it, the odds are that they're just going to keep focusing down Snaking. Make sure he can't get that those levels, can't get that gold, and more importantly, just allow... Paparazzi to just keep free farming on that Arc Warden. Meanwhile though, top lane, there is a bit of action going on. Yang, copying a fair bit of damage. 
They don't really have any more follow-up to keep chasing down the Sanking, so they'll leave him be. And Yang did opt for the, uh, the level 1 Sandstorm as well, and has been left alone, so it does make enough sense. The only problem is, when you do go for that Sandstorm as a priority, you've got to make sure that you can get the Sentry Wards the enemy places down. And as you can see, Yang's set up for it. He does have two Sentry Wards, but Pile and Die is not going to allow him to walk in range to actually deny the other ward that the Die has placed. And it's really good positioning coming out from forward. And again, Pile and Die on the CM, just forcing Yang back. Still a lot stuck at level 1. Should be hitting that level 2 mark fairly soon. But before then, he just can't contest this lane too well. And you are just going to feel comfortable enough to continuously throw out storm hammers whenever he has them. Just thanks to that bonus mana region he'll be getting from that Pile Die Aura. Plus mid lane as well. Ori, he'll be up against CCNC on that Ember Spirit. Ori seems to be having a pretty decent time already. CCNC finding himself one last hit ahead though. And, I mean, we had this last game, but it is one of those lanes where you're probably not going to see too much action coming out from either of these two. Until they're happy with the levels they've gotten, they're just probably going to trade farm. I mean, CCNT, he's got that flame guard available anyway. So a lot of that magic damage is going to be blocked off. But more importantly, John, it does look like Ori's actually gone for the Lightning Storm build, which is something I haven't seen in a very long time. It's really down to playing that mid lane, right? For the most part, when we see the Lush racks, it's usually on support or off or safe. And in those cases, you generally do go for the Diabolic Edict. Down mid, the Lightning Storm is just too valuable in the creep wave that you can't skip out in it. So I can understand where Ori is coming from. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, CCNC. A free slide of fist there. Ori, gotta be careful. CCNC won't have another slide of fist for a while, so Ori understands this and will play his cards right. We'll walk back, heal himself up as well. Meanwhile, top lane, Yang, gonna be in trouble. Frostbite and Stormhammer connecting you. While we'll find the first blunt for the side of forward gaming. So, a bit of a difference this game around. They actually find the first blood on the dire side. That will be a nice little start coming out for you. It does look like VG is really willing to sack Yang's lane this time around. I mean, he had a high impact in the last game. He had good timing on his items. Solo laning against this dual lane, which we mentioned from draft, is going to be really strong. Again, easy setup for the Sven, and great range from the CM just means you will be applying that harass very easily. It does mean that Yang's not going to have a good time. He's not going to be hitting that timing as he did in game one, and you can already see forward. Again, Pylite Eye committing hard to slow down Yang. Oh, snaking. He'll end up going down to the bot lane, but yeah, Pylite Eye just not allowing Yang to free farm, and now another Stormhammer comes out, and well... Oh, they don't actually find him. Nice burrow strike from Yang. He'll hide in the tree line. Pylidai knows where he is. Cuts down the right tree and gets the Crystal Nova off in the end. Will be able to pick up that kill for himself. That'll make it a 1-2. to two. This is one of the strengths about having a support like Pylidai. He'll just spend all his gold on wards. He won't even care if he doesn't have brown boots. He'll just keep going like this. And it's going to make Yang Ori. suffer quite a bit. And meanwhile, Ori ends up falling. CC and C, though, now going to be in trouble, though. Nice line of fist dodge, but it won't get the job done. DY will find the trade, but I imagine you'd still be happy taking down that Leshrac. Definitely are. You get the EXP there because, you know, you get that kill first. You're around to get that EXP. And as the Ember, you're going to be really happy about that. Sure, you force out the rotations from your support, but you force out the enemy rotations as well. And it was, that was two supports coming in to help. So you manage to get that nice kill, and you are getting a bit more for yourself. It is getting to that point where the Leshrac, it can still farm well, it's just harder and harder for him to pierce through that Flame Guard. Because at level 3, that's a lot of damage it blocks, and once it's maxed out, of course, you're not going to be bursting down CCNC as much as you were earlier on. CCNC, still one last hit ahead of Ori. He's starting to have to commit a lot more regen, though, towards Ori. The harassment has started to be really ramped up from this Leshrac. Especially when you don't have that uh, that shield available on CCNC, that Lightning Storm going to be so frustrating. But he's at that level 6 mark now, so the chances of dying for him are a lot lower. So, Fade going to be there to set up 
around that ruined spot. CCNT will cop the ink swore. He kind of mismanaged that slide of fist. It won't matter though anyway. The haste rune was down at the bottom. In fact, MSS is going to rotate into the mid lane. They're going to try and catch up, perhaps just fade. And the frostbite, it will connect. Stroke of fate will be there, but CCNC, slide of fist available. Parlay Dai will be the one to pick up the kill and now will pay for it with his life. But again, a position five for a position four, you're probably not going to mind too much. You do get a bit more as VG there again. That kill landing onto Ori is much more beneficial compared to Pilot Eye getting that kill in the support. He gets the gold. He doesn't really need it, and you don't get too much in the Ember. He got 16 gold from that exchange. Not the best time, so Ori definitely happy with that trade. And overall, VG does gain a bit more. Speed going down onto Paparazzi bot lane, but there's no follow up to it. Just a dual breath coming out from MSS. It's like snaking has struggled somewhat in this off lane. I mean, Paparazzi, second in the last hits board with 34 last hits, 16 denies. Of course, Yuar is finding himself at the top of the last hits board with 48 last hits and 21 denies. This man's having an absolute free farm lane for himself. And I guess it just still goes back to the fact that Yang can't really do anything. In fact, Pilar Dai places another really deep sentry ward right next to the T1 tower of the Radiant side. I mean, Yang at the very least has hit level 5, but it's going to take a while for him to finish off this Veil of Discord, let alone a Blink Tagger. Yeah, even with just that Veil, he's not going to be able to do as much as he did in Game 1. We saw him rush to Blink on that Mars last time, which allowed him to gap close. And again, going for that Veil... Could speed up his farm, could amp up his damage, but means he really just can't start these fights the way VG wants them to start. So they're going to have to rely on someone else for the initiation before that item comes out. DCNC going to rotate over up to that top lane and that spot out Yang trying to farm a bit of a neutral stack and he's going to try and steal most of it. Let's get a bit of gold out of it. Pilot die as well rotating in but doesn't have any more detection to use. But no, he did have the dust available, but it looks like without the chains available yet on CCNC, they don't bother trying. So they'll just be happy with finding this farm that they need. Do you think VG Gaming, though, like, they seem to not really be messing with UR at all yet. He's got his Midas up now as well. I mean, you'd assume they'd kind of need to make a play on this fence soon, but it seems like they're quite confident just allowing Paparazzi to get farmed. In fact, Paparazzi almost finds snaking. The snaking does manage to TP out, but do you think Vici is is quite happy just letting the Sven farm and allowing Pepperazzi to do the same? Or in the end, it really benefits Vici a lot more. Again, with something like the Arc Warden, your farm escalates a lot faster compared to the Sven. Now, the Sven again can clear out waves quite fast, and he does get the kill on Yang again. But you are trading that off lane for your safe lane. As you mentioned earlier, again, Paparazzi is just having that good time. He's shipping out his own Midas, and this is when his farm will start to escalate much, much faster as well. We'll see how much faster, because he is about 1.3k behind you are right now, so he's a fair bit behind, but we know how fast these, uh, these Arc Wardens tend to farm up, especially once they have that double Midas available. Plus mid lane, looks like there is a jump from Yang onto MSS and they will find an easy pick off. So Yang just had enough of that top lane, will rotate in, find a kill. And now they find snaking down the bot lane as well. Not even using, they don't even have overgrowth yet. It was literally just the nature's guys into a leech seed it looks like. They got the job done. It was mainly raw right clicks actually from Paparazzi. So just a slight extension from our Mars is easy to punish. Although they will find a counter kill on DY. Yeah, hopefully CCNC will get the kill, and they do give it to him. Of course, he didn't want to give it again to Pile I Die. The man doesn't need the farm. Now, <laughs> bot lane, can they find Paparazzi? They don't have Arena of Blood up yet, which makes it a lot harder, because you've got to rely on that stun from the spear. CCNC, at the very least, does have two levels in chain now, so you can lock him down just a bit, but... Looks like we'll have to wait a bit longer for that attempt because DY is back in the building and does have Overgrowth now available, so it's going to be a lot harder to even think about jumping him. Kind of shocked to see as well, like, you are he's just committed to the jungle now instead of going to that top lane. But this gives space to Yang to just free farm the top lane now. He's actually quite close to picking up that Veil, and it is going to apply quite a bit of pressure to that T1 tower up at the top lane. 
I'm not sure if this is necessary from you while like it it makes sense to get the safer farm but at the same time it's a lot slower in the jungle I don't know do you think he's in fact hold that thought because bot lane they may lose CCNC who is dying to the flux and will end up going down to the neutral creep I guess at least he got denied off so neutral creep making the best play in that last couple seconds but <laughs> I was asking about Yuwa, like, his rotation to the jungle, is this a smart play, or do you think he should've just stayed in the top lane? He should've, he should've just stayed in lane. Uh, they're probably worried about rotations at this point, it just doesn't look like, again, VG doesn't even seem to consider Yuwa a threat right now, so they just leave him alone entirely, they're much more focused on protecting paparazzi than being the aggressors this time around, which is fair enough, again, you want that early farm, the Arc Warden, I guess they really are just confident in playing against that Sven, you do have ways of kiting that hero around, and with the supports you have, it's pretty good control you have. You should be able to stack the stunts. The worrying timing is when forward does build up a BKB on your war. He's going for the SNY first, but he could possibly go for BKB item number two, and that's going to be hard to play against. Worry, getting jumped by CCNC, DY is there though, though no overgrowth available, and CCNC is still moving forward, but Yang gets the Baron Strike into the Split Earth, CCNC is still alive, they do take down DY on the tree, and the Ember does manage to get out, can they get out the Mars? They indeed can, the Inkswell was not there in time, so not their most amazing kill, but they do pull off the DY kill, and they do get out safely. It's a nice small win for Ford, not the best. A uh, couple of missteps from VG though, like they don't manage to get that execution they want in that fight too cleanly. They don't really have any ways of countering that team fight as well. Sure, they have that great control from the Overcroat, wasn't even popped in that last fight. They just lost the Y too fast, and that just kind of costed them. It is an opening though. They know those enemy ults are down, and they smoke up immediately. Yeah, CC and C. Does have a remnant out, so he should be able to get out in time, unless, of course, Yang gets the Baron Strike off. And looks like he is going to be in range. CCNC gets used up. Yang is there, but Inkswall doesn't connect, but it doesn't matter. They got the silence off, and he could not remnant out. And with that as well, you look up down to the bot lane. Snaking about to die. The Spark Wraith not connecting, although Parlai die, just taking basically all of them. They're still trying to find him with those Spark Wraiths, but they can't get him in the end, though. Parlai die will die into the Flux, and now you are. He comes in a nice spear on Paparazzi, and they will find the real Arc Warden. Very important pick up there. So forward gaming, they still lose two in the process, but they do find the position one in the end. It's a very big kill for forward gaming this time around, of course, just slowing down an Arc Warden, getting that nice pivotal kill is great. They have lost a lot of ground up top in exchange though, and they can't even get a push going down bot because, again, that sustain from the Treant basically means VG's towers are not going to fall anytime soon. They're playing against a Jakiro who still hasn't taken the tower at 14 minutes in. That's not a good sign for forward in terms of control. And if it keeps up, they're just not going to have any sort of good positioning to really roam that jungle as much as they want. I guess that kind of reveals the game plan as well from VG, right? Like, just drag out the game as long as possible until Paparazzi's ready. And he is getting closer and closer to that point. He's got the Maelstrom up now as well in that Arc Warden. Forward, trying to make some kind of play. CCNC will find the Grimstroke, and now the stun does come out, though. DY, Overgrowth, not being thrown out yet. We're in a blood just holding him in. They will find Fade. DY still holding on. In fact, he did throw out the overgrowth, but it just didn't seem to hit anybody. They'll find Yang as well. Ori gets speared to a tree. You are moves in as well. DY still around. Will throw out the heal, but is it going to be enough? It will at least allow a, lip, a bit more damage to come out, but it won't be enough. DY now almost ties to the remnant damage from CCNC. He will survive in the end, but does have to be very careful. And he is just concentrating on making sure that tower doesn't go down. So much so that he forgot there's two bounty runes behind him and leaves them for snaking. In fact, they are going to go again. Dual Breath, MSS, doesn't hit the Ice Path now. Probably will end up dying, although they get DY as a trade. Yuwa doesn't have mana for the stun. He's going to keep chasing though, but this is dangerous. Snaking misses the spear and now the Tempest Double comes in. Paparazzi, Spake, Spark Wraith will connect and snaking does go down. You are, at the very least, will be able to TP out. So a bit of a mess down at the bot lane. They do manage to finally get that T1 tower. But as you pointed out before, they pretty much have to commit all their heroes to ensure they can actually find those towers. They, they really do. Again, the damage just isn't enough if you're pushing against a tree without all your heroes to bear. 
and you're gonna need to do that every single time. You're gonna need to transition from a team fight into a tower, get that jump going every single time. I'm not sure how often you can get that going, although it, from this moment as of now, of course, the vision from VG isn't that great. They have no good watch on their jungle, they have no forward wards as well, whereas forward gaming themselves have um, at least one defensive ward, nothing offensive, but they can at least farm their jungle a bit safer. If they want to get those deep moves in the jungle, though, they really have to invest a bit more in vision. They cannot hope to catch VG out unaware that often, especially as Yang is inching closer towards that blink. That's going to give VG their own way of initiating starting these fights, and so far we've seen them react. We haven't seen VG initiate just so just yet, and the moment they can do that, I think you're going to be seeing a very different sort of fight break out for forward. Yeah. Well, forward, they will get started on that mid lane tier one, it looks like. Yeah, just trying to keep up that aggression. They realize they have to get these towers down, gain that map control. So you see Vici trying their absolute hardest to ensure this T1 does not fall. They have caught out Snaking though, but Snaking still pretty healthy and now Ori falling pretty darn low on the left track. Though he is the boy in the bubble, but look at that Burrow Strike with the Epi. It's not amazing, but it does get the job done. And now Parlai die. he goes down as well. Yang setting up for the team. MSS does find the trade in Yang, but he'll probably end up losing his own life now. So a 2 for 4 trade it looks like coming out for Vici Gaming. You know, it really was all that Sanking jumping in, getting that three-man burrow into the epicenter. If he had not landed that, I feel like that would have been a wipe coming out from Ichi Gaming, but four men going down for forward gaming. They only lose two on the Radiant side. That's, again, down to the timing of VG. As mentioned earlier, it's the blink from Yang. It allows them to start these fights, and you as forward need to be very cautious now. You have to always be aware of the Sand King's positioning. You have to be aware of just how you counter initiate into that you have to split up a bit more that fight they were so tight they got soul blinded then the burst strike came in so you had a lot of uh, control coming out from vg you need to space yourself out more if you're forward you need to declump and come back in after those stuns are out get your own control in get your damage out because you can do it forward does have the damage we have seen them successfully take these fights they just have to be aware of the added control VG does have now from Yang. Absolutely. It's just kind of incredible how fast he came back on that Sanking, considering the lane he had. He just got everything he basically needs to be back online for his team. That'll give the slight net worth lead to VG Gaming now. But it does look like forward, do smoke up immediately, and again, they really want that T1 mid tower. It's back up to full HP, but they have found DY on the tree and protector, and that's going to be a target that they need to take down, so they can actually take down a tower without having that heal kick in. And it looks like they will do exactly that, although Paparazzi will TP in his temper stubble. Yang! Epicenter goes in, Burrow Strike as well, only catches one, but with that Veil, it's a lot of damage. Snaking is gone. Now they took down Ori as well, though. They get Yang, Yuwa, with the BKB doing a lot of work. And it looks like three go down for the first side of Vici. Snaking, he still has a lot to do with this team, so he does buy back. And it looks like they're going to try and capitalize and take another T2 while they can, but no, they will opt to back out after all. Another item timing from forward that does catch VG off guard again, that BKB coming out from UR. That was the 10 second charge, very effective use of it on top of that. It just enabled him to stand in the middle. He took no damage from the initiation of VG this time around, melted Ori and Yang. And again, that's the control of VG once you take that away. It's going to be an easy time for uh, forward to really just take over in these fights. You have to be aware of that as well as VG, especially since you're pretty much taking these fights 4v5. Sure, Paparazzi throws in his double. It's not quite the same as having both the double and the main hero committed there. He's still trying to find that farm, working towards his travels to be a true menace around the map. Before then, you're not going to really see Paparazzi do too much. He's just going to farm up, as is the tendency for most uh, players on this hero. It's just not online that fast. Well, Vici will go for a smoke, and who do they find? But Pilei die on that CM. So nice little pickup for the side of Vici. Definitely not what they wanted, but they could find a secondary in Yuwa. That is definitely a nicer target to find, but Yuwa will get out of there immediately on that Sven. Looks like he's just trying to farm up a Bloodthorn now. 
on that position one. CCNC, meanwhile, looks like he's just trying to pick up his Yules after the Maelstrom. But again, the main concern here is Paparazzi, who is still behind you, Warren, in terms of net worth. He's starting to get to that point, though, where you, you've got to start worrying, right? Like, he's got that Mjolnir up, he's got the Boots of Travel now up, and that's just going to mean you're going to have this rat potential coming out constantly from this hero. It is starting to come online again. Just for VG, this is a lot of your strategy right now. Delay the game long enough, have paparazzi come in, push out all the lanes, make it hellish for FG to end the game. And it's just going to be hellish. It's always going to be hellish. Not just because of the split push, but again, because of that living armor coming out from DY. And it's always just going to keep these towers alive long enough. They still haven't lost their top tier one. Their tier twos are still looking completely healthy. Oh, and it's, again, if you don't pierce now, it's going to be hard. Snaking. They try to gank him up top lane, and there was a smoke from forward, though. They go straight up top. They found Fade on that Grimstroke, popping the God Strength for this kill as well, and they will find it. Yang would have definitely been the better target, but it doesn't look like they really spotted him out. He will be able to get away with his life. They are going to try and set up for this tier 1 tower now. Looks like they'll claim it pretty easily as well. No defense attempt coming out from VG Gaming. So a 3k net worth lead now for forward gaming, and they are going to be there to defend their bot tower. In fact, Ori gets jumped straight away. Now the Arena of Blood as well, and where's the help for Ori? It's just not there. DY is coming in, but now he's a sitting duck on that tree and protector. Nowhere to go. The Ice Path connects, and now the sentry being dropped as well, and DY goes down. And to make matters worse for Vici, they do not get the T1 either. It's really strange seeing VG play like this. They're going in one by one and getting picked off one by one after already losing heroes beforehand. And forward is finally coming online. Again, they have the tools to take these fights now. They're going to be looking at the main paparazzi. Oh, paparazzi actually throwing the rule thing in the mid lane. And he is basically dead. Although he's trying to mad fight CCNC. Actually to, almost goes down. But the slide of fist will save him from a lot of damage. That was a very strange one to see. I mean... He kind of saw them down at the bot lane and then they went missing, but he, he stuck around in the mid lane with the real Arc Warden rather than just the Tempest Stub one. It does cost him. I mean, you could kind of blame Vision for that, although not really. They had Ward watching that tier 1 where his two allies died. They saw them walk into the jungle. You should have expected that rotation to come out. Nonetheless, again, strange. Mid lane? Yang, Ice Path connects, although you are still chasing, but now Soulbind, but they get the kill. The Soulbind was not there in time, and now they find three kills. The Cleave from you are just tearing people apart. They might even find Ori, CCNC, trying to find those chains. He does get them, Split Earth being dodged by you are. The follow-up stun, an ultra kill coming out for you are on the Sven, and a full team wipe as well. Beachy Gaming. Just getting caught out constantly in forward gaming. I mean, where was this team in the first game? I don't know, but they definitely change it up for game number two. They have a they have a draft they're executing much better than they did earlier on, and again they're finding all these kills that they really need. Well, can can they protect that tier three tower on Vici? It looks like the buybacks will be enough for forward to back off though. They've got to be careful. I mean, they may just turn around. They've still got a lot to throw out. CCNC thinks about it, but they don't dive too far out. Though snaking has the arena. Looking to throw it up. They will silence him up. Now the epicenter burrow though. They found the Sven Yuar. He still has a BKB. He will turn around on Yang. Now BKB is popped. The overgrowth comes out. But DY is dead. Now Yang goes down as well. They found the Grimstroke to make matters worse. Fade. Probably not going to survive this. In fact, he does go down. Paparazzi trying to get something done with this Tempest Double. But it looks like it's already too late. Although no. Ori jumps in. He's looking to clean up everybody on the side of forward gaming. But can't really risk it. He might find CCNC as well. And does do so. So Ori and Paparazzi by themselves get three heroes after three of their own have died. That's not a great sign for forward. I mean, it looked like they had every single tool in the bag there to kind of siege that high ground. But again, if you wait long enough, you have the heroes from VG come in back oh, and Ori? take that fight. Oh. Hmm. I mean, I know he couldn't see him. That was a very risky play though from Ori. I mean, going for that banner in, you'd expect at least one of them to be there. Yuar does capitalize. He gets another free kill off Ori, who has had a bit of a rough game, let's be honest. Three to seven with eight assists. Definitely not the best Leshrac performance we've ever seen. 
He'll be sidelined for another 40 seconds now. Ichi Gaming. I mean, they still have the potential to turn this game around very easily. Again, you've got an Arc Warden who can delay the game as long as you want. But Vici, they have to really try and concentrate on not getting caught out like this to forward gaming. Otherwise, the game could just end. Especially considering how many buybacks they just used up before. It certainly is, like, looking pretty rough for Vici, right? They've lost a lot of ground already. Granted, their high ground is still standing. That's the important bit at the end. Would like to see DY healing up that tier 3 down mid a bit more. Hasn't been doing that just yet. You need to keep that thing healthy to keep yourself in the game. Yeah. Beyond that, again, it's a delaying game. You're, you're waiting for Paparazzi to finally be big enough to be a major threat. You're probably going to be waiting for maybe the Ags coming out from your supports, or at the very least a blink from DY. And then that really sets you up to take these team fights even better. Well, they're thinking about taking the Roshan, but there was an illusion there scouting that out, so they will leave the Roshan B for a bit on the side of Vici. They do stay very huddled up as a team, which is to be expected, considering the, the way the last couple fights went for themselves. Yeah, they're just going to be pretty com pretty just happy to farm up. Like, there's no need for them to rush forward. They're basically doing the same, though. I mean, you are. He just picks up a Bloodthorn. You have the BKB now available on CCNC as well. And perhaps this will be the moment where they say, all right, we're going to go right now. Because Yuwa is basically at that six slotted point. You can get rid of the Midas and replace it with that Assault Curass, which he will do. There's only so much more you can do on this Sven before you've got to try and make that high ground push once again. Definitely so. And, you know, we have kind of stalled out, which is what VG wants. Again, they want to slow this game down, and they certainly have. But forward is still ahead. You know, they're still 10k ahead, 10 kills ahead. They've got the map control down, and they've got the items they want in the war. The issue is, they haven't been using it just yet, although that in this room might be an opportunity. Perhaps Paparazzi, though. Slowly just pushing out that mid T1 with the Tempest double. What? What can he do with this invis? He's thinking about the Roshan, but the Spark Wraith makes it obvious, and now they found him. The Sentry Ward was there. You are, though, will turn around. Bob Constrict has been popped. They want Yang first. They almost find him, but not quite yet. Yang still surviving somehow. The Overgrowth just keeping everyone locked in. Now a spear is pretty nicely placed from Snake King. They're going to go after Ori first in that arena. Can they burst Ori down, though? Not quite. In fact, he does go down, but the Epicenter Borrow from Yang really turning it around. A two-for-two two trade right now. There will be a buyback from Snake King. They will also find Paparazzi on the Ark Warden DY trying to find Pilot Die on the Crystal Maiden. He might cost him his life, and it does in the end. He'll find Pilot Die, but I feel like DY's life was more important. They will at least get the Grimstroke out of there, but this T3 tower definitely should be going down now, and you'd argue it should be also be a Rax. It could be one, definitely for sure. They do buy back on the Treant. Now, there's not much he can really do here. He can try to heal it up, but with the damage coming out at this point, it's not going to be enough. Although... CCNC, got to be careful. It's falling quite low, and yeah, they'll get the T3 tower, but even just those two supports being there is threatening enough, especially considering Yang is about to respawn, and now does. So you get the T3 tower, shrines open up to be taken. CCNC will run it back, but will avoid death. And it looks like they will head over to that top shrine and perhaps start setting up for the Roshan play. Although, no, they'll leave the uh, they'll leave the shrine alone for now. But they'll just go ahead and secure those banner ins first. Dy already trying to scout out for that Roshan. Though CCNC wants to make a play, but he's surrounded. Overgrowth Baron Strike comes in. He BKBs up, and he's still fighting for this. He really wants Dy on that tree and protector. Can he find him? He throws a remnant out just in case. Yang getting set up for the burrow. He does get it as well. Now snaking though jumps in with the arena. Though CCNC is still in trouble and does go down. The ice path connects on the sanking Yang. He will lose his life in the process, but I would say that was not worth it for forward gaming. Definitely not. You lose a much bigger target in that Ember Spirit this time around, and you at least trade away Yang, but he's died so many times now that, you know, he's done his job, right? He just gets the stun out. That's going to be enough, and you're not going to be too unhappy as VG. Now, 
granted, forward still is ahead. You know, that doesn't swing the net for it too much back the way of VG, and the BKBs have been used to great effect. You are starting to run low on them. Like, seven seconds on you are now. Over on CCNC, it's down to eight seconds as well. As the game goes on, as that does tick down, you're going to see VG bounce back in, of course. So that means Ori is going to have more effective uptime. He's going to be able to do a bit more damage and not worrying about that magic community. Um, you know, it gets cut in half. So, again, VG is just looking to delay the game a bit more. The issue is, can Paparazzi do enough? We have seen moments where the Orc Warden is just not big enough, despite all the resources poured in. This time around, I'm not sure if Paparazzi should be able to close this out. As again, forward is just way too far ahead, and they've have they have been playing it quite nicely this draft this time around. Certainly have VG gaming though. They're gonna go for a smoke to set up. Of course, Roshan is available, so assuming they do find a nice team fight, they can claim a Roshan as well. Radiant scan was in the Roshan pit, and they'll find nothing. They seem to realize Yuwa is in the mid lane. In fact, Yuwa has to be careful not to run too far down south. And it looks like both sides will just back off. Tempest Stubble will be set up to the top lane and that'll at least push it out a bit. But that smoke attempt definitely not going to be of any success for VG. CCNC actually cops a lot of damage from the double. Trying to contest it and <laughs> cops a bit too much has to remnant away. Keep him back home. The thing is, Paparazzi, he just bought that MKB now, so... He is starting to hit, like, pretty darn hard. Even with those, uh, the Tempest Doubles, it's just so hard to deal with. Parlay die. Should be okay mid lane. I, I doubt they would risk making the jump just for a Crystal Maiden. Looks like they won't. They might just send the Tempest Double in, though. In fact, he does cop the Flux. And the Spark Wraith, but should be okay. Forward gaming, they don't seem very interested in actually trying to initiate quite yet. Looking at Yuwa though, he does have the Satanic up now. But it just seems like they don't seem to be able to find an opening to be able to catch VG out. They certainly can't, and VG has been playing rather conservatively the past few minutes. I believe they are CNC. waiting for one big item. Aura Strike on CCNC, Overgrowth and Silencer as well, though the Yules will save him and looks like he will remnant out. Oh, you are. Jumps in as well, but just throws out the stun and backs off. They will get the bottom shrine at the very least. Again, Roshan is still standing, but both sides are watching it very carefully. Are looking for a target to start up though. He doesn't find anyone quite yet. By the way, MSS, he went for a, he went for the Aghanim Scepter on the Jakira. So he has that massive macro pie duration now, as well as the cooldown, but I'm not sure how effective that's really gonna be. I mean it is a lot of damage, assuming they stand in the fire, but they've got to actually stand in the fire. It's mainly for the D push. You're playing against uh, Arc Warden first, so the split push is going to be coming out. You need ways of uh, cancelling that push out, and the Ags and Shakira is one way to do it. So it's going to be really effective in that sense in clearing out these waves, keeping them pushed for the wave forward. And the team fight damage is just snaking. Nice. Jumps in, gets a nice arena off. They caught out the left track though. Ori just BKBs and moves forward. Thinking about going back in. Paparazzi will do the same with the Tempest Double, but snaking. He has a BKB too. Now CCC jumps in, but they're going to fight underneath the shrine. Overgrowth comes out from DY. They're just trying to get Ori, and they will find him in the end. Paparazzi. Falling low with the Tempest Double. They will find Yang, and now the real one will end up going down forward. They end up finding him. Three heroes down for the side of Vici Gaming. They know where Fade is as well, and Fade goes for the TP play, but will not make it out thanks to CCNC. And another ultra kill coming out for Yuwa. It's his second one this game. The buybacks start pouring out from Vici Gaming and forward. They might just go for the Roshan instead. In fact, they found the tree and protector. In fact, that was Paparazzi in the Tempest Stubble. So they'll burst down that Tempest Stubble immediately, and now I believe they'll go for the Roshan play. The only thing is, though, there is still a shrine available up at that top top shrine spot. 
They still have that point to TP in. Again, they still lack their big team fight ultimate from that tree. And they don't have the Sand King up yet. And they have a good board watching that shrine. So it's going to be a very safe Roche anyway. And you don't really see BG coming out here. They're just getting that D push on. Fixing themselves up for that next Roche fight, which, you know, I mean, that next high ground push, which should be soon, with his Aegis coming in for forward. Yeah, it looks like they are starting to set up. Of course, there is that one out of tower left for Vici Gaming up at the top lane, so they'll probably go for that first. Just open up all their options. So get rid of that Tempest Double up at the top lane as well, it looks like. It will expire soon anyway, but... Trying to get rid of it, save your siege creep. Ichi Gaming. Not really much buybacks left for them. They've only got Yang's buyback available on the Radiant side. So this could be their last team fight if forward do end up winning. Thing is, do forward even try to push the high ground? It isn't as easy said as done. Paparazzi as well. Split pushing that bot lane. Yang will hang around the area as well. And yeah, forward. It looks like they just aren't ready to actually try and make that push. They're just going to go back and defend for a bit. CC and C. He'll get that job done. They need to find a pick off first. It looks like. And DY, he is around that bot lane. But it's so hard to catch this man out. Luckily, you do have the gem available in MSS, but again, you've got to find him in the tree line somehow. Meanwhile, CCNT gets jumped by Yang. He'll be okay. They have also bought more time for DY's buyback to be online as well. So the longer that they can drag out this, uh, this push attempt from forward gaming, the more time it's going to buy them to have all those buybacks ready and available and Give them a better chance for that next team fight, at least. Definitely does. You have to really be aware of forward as well right now. I mean, you already have that Ags up on CCNC, so he's going to be all over this map now. And he has a 25 talent as well. Almost found Yang. Yang does get out in time, though. That Aghanim Scepter upgrade on CCNC. Kind of ridiculous, of course, on the Ember Spirit. Just able to zip around no matter where he wants to. See, you are and Pilot Die still trying to set up for that top push, but again, Paparazzi with that Tempest Double just doing Arc Warden things. Just classic Arc Warden things to do. Just split pushes every single time. Creep skips, and there's just not much you can do about it. Forward, how do you respond? CCNC trying to catch somebody with their pants down, but. He may get in a bit of trouble here if he's not careful. Yang looking to set up with the burrow, but doesn't go for it. Oh, Soulbind comes out with a double hex as well. Though they do four stuff already forward, and now he's in trouble, but he gets the BKB off. They are going to go after Pali Dai and Snaking first, though. No, they're going to chase down Ori. Paparazzi ends up getting Pali Dai, and Forward Gaming do not want any more of this fight. They will back off. That's a pretty good fight coming out for VG. They force out some ultimates at the very least. The God Strength is already out from forward. So, you know, they're not going to have that in the next push, although the cooldown isn't too massive anyway. You're going to be able to have that back up for the next push attempt, unless VG forces a fight now. CCNC, he will find the Grimstroke, now the Stormhammer, as well as that Arena of Blood. DY is in there as well. Get rid of that tree and Protector, and they will do so. The Paparazzi, he's going to go for this fight, but you are just moves forward. Although he's copying way too much damage, you are. He popped the Satanic, but he can't actually right-click. They'll find Ori anyway on the left track. He doesn't have buyback available. Now the Spearback as well. They found Paparazzi on that Arc Warden. CCNC really setting up here. They'll find the Sand King as well. Yang does end up going down. And the GG call has been made. Forward Gaming do actually win the second game out. The Arc Warden draft does not end up working out. And that will force rule game number three. I and mean, that's a really good comeback from forward after...